From inside Robb Elementary, the day of the deadly school shooting in Uvalde, we are continuing to follow the very latest. Plus, the heat continues to be a big story, and one local organization is looking for volunteers to help them hand out cooling kits. We're going to tell you how you can get involved. And outside with live camp already warming up, we bottomed that around 80 degrees, already up to 84. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. It's Wednesday, July 13th. Yes, hope you're having a good week so far. Hope you're staying cool. We're going to check in with Justin in just a minute. But for now, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Finally, we have better news report here off US 90. Thanks, Mark Stuff. US 90, a couples. We had some pretty serious issues out there. A crash that led to some major delays. That crash reported around 6 this morning. But now it does look like things are moving fine. However, earlier that was not the case. Let's go ahead and show you the scene from where that crash happened. Our photojournalist Ken Weezer was out there. Let's talk about what we're seeing here for a moment because you can see at least one of those vehicles with some damage to the back end. But however, we are also seeing that a police unit did have some damage to the front end. You can see it right there on the screen. I did talk to our friends uh, with TransGuide. We know that this led to some major delays, but San Antonio police only releasing some details right now saying that this was a two vehicle crash that did involve a police unit and thankfully there were no injuries. So that's the good news there. There, but for drivers in those uh, westbound lanes, they did experience some closures out there. We were offering those alternative routes, but uh, the information is still not released at this time. We're going to work to bring you those details as the morning does go on. But thankfully, here off US 90 couples, the situation has improved, but we'll be sure to update this story on air and online at KSAT.com. Mark Stuff. Stephen, thank you. <laughs> Let's look at today's nine at nine. The leaked video from inside Robb Elementary in Uvalde of the deadly shooting in May is causing outrage. Families were blindsided by the release by the Austin American Statesman. They were supposed to be shown the video in private this weekend first before it was released to the public. Uvalde Mayor Don McLaughlin was angered by the release as well and says he still plans to meet with the families on Sunday. New evidence from the January 6th committee focusing on former President Trump claiming his actions summoned the mob to storm the U.S. Capitol. The committee claims Trump even planned the march to the Capitol. The question now is, does this evidence increase the chances of Trump facing charges? The committee's next public hearing is set for next Thursday. Abortion access is far from a settled matter in the U.S. Two more courts pushed back on state abortion restrictions. House and Senate committees are discussing abortion access today. It comes as the Justice Department announces a reproductive rights task force to safeguard things like patient privacy and access to abortion in medical emergencies. COVID-19 cases are climbing nationwide. More than half are estimated to be linked to the newest subvariant of Omicron, BA5. Doctors warn it's more transmissible than past strains of the virus and could still infect people who have recently had COVID. The White House is responding by telling Americans over 50 to make sure they have received a second booster dose. Jalen Walker is being laid to rest today. It's also a citywide day of mourning in Akron, Ohio after weeks of protests. The 25-year-old was killed in an officer-involved shooting when police say he tried to get away during a traffic stop. The Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigations is checking for possible criminal wrongdoing by the officers involved. The inmate who escaped from an Alabama jail with a corrections officer has been indicted for felony murder in her death. Officer Vicki White died after a crash from a single gunshot wound to the head, and her death was ruled a suicide. But a new indictment alleges inmate Casey White caused her death because they went on the run together. He has also been charged with first degree escape. We're getting a new look at how fast prices have been rising. Data from last month shows prices jump at the highest rate in four decades, prolonging a period of inflation that has strained household budgets nationwide. The consumer price index stood at 9.1% in June, a significant increase from 8.6% in May. Stocks taking a tumble for the third session in a row. Yesterday's closing bell saw both the S&P and NASDAQ fall 0.9%. The Dow finished 0.6% lower, also dropping for oil prices. And concerns about economic slowdowns have eaten into oil prices. They closed at just under $100 a barrel, down more than 7%. Days after Elon Musk said he wanted to back out of his deal to buy Twitter, the social network is taking him to court. 
The company says Musk is trying to walk away from the $44 billion bid after bashing the company and, in its words, destroying stockholder value. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Outside with live cam, 84 degrees, and we're expecting another triple digit day. Hopefully not quite as scorching hot, Justin. Yeah, oh, maybe we'll shave off a degree or two. That's about all we can give you. Yesterday was so hot yet again. We set more records. Highs yesterday were around 105 here in San Antonio, and uh, we saw those temperatures really uh, jump up during the afternoon. 105 here, 107 in New Braunfels, 104 in Seguin, 106 in Bernie Stage. So it just did. We're, we're going to see another day like this again, just not quite as hot. Maybe like 103, 104 here in San Antonio instead. It's about all we can give you at this point. I mean, it has been a brutal, brutal month. Uh, let's look at the uh, number of 100 degree days so far this year. 33. We keep adding to this list. And uh, we're closing in on the records. Uh, I know we show you this daily, but it's because we've been at 100 or above daily. Pollen count is in. Molds are moderate. 580. Grass is low. Pigweed is low. And as we look at the forecast temperature today, 104 here in San Antonio, 103 Divine, 99 up in Bernie, 97 Kerrville. Yes, there is a small chance for a shower today. I think a little better chance tomorrow and still a lot of triple digits uh, in the forecast. We're going to check in on the aquifer. It's dropping like a rock. We'll have the latest there. We're also going to talk a little bit more about ERCOT, another one of those days where it could be a close call. Details on that here in just a bit, guys. Well, we've been talking about the extreme heat for days now and Meals on Wheels in San Antonio helping the community try to stay cool. They are asking for volunteers to help them distribute cooling kits to their clients. And RJ Market stopped by the Meals on Wheels warehouse to take a look at what's in the kits and how this will keep people safe during this heat wave. Stacks of water bottles, box fans, and air conditioned units all ready to hit the road this Saturday morning. We're going to be delivering uh, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, things to approximately 3,700 or so Meals on Wheels clients. Meals on Wheels is hosting a Keep Cool Delivery distribution event, handing out hundreds of cooling kits to those in need. The majority of the, the folks that Meals on Wheels serves are individuals who have difficulty leaving their home. Some of these do not have air conditioners. Some of them have fans only. These kits include water bottles a fridge magnet thermometer to show indoor temperatures, a reusable ice pack, and a cooling towel. Just simply dip it into water, put it around their neck. It's amazing what it does to help keep the body temperature down. Uh, we have a ice pack that is a, a little safety ice pack for them to keep in their uh, freezer. Along with these cooling items like this cold pack and the first aid kit, Meals on Wheels will also be distributing these AC wall units and these box fans to pre-qualified clients. It's going to be close to 400 people who will be getting box fans that day. It'll be somewhere between 20 and 30 of those delivered on Saturday as well. Meals on Wheels is also looking for close to 400 volunteers to help deliver these items and cooling kits. The organization CEO, Vincent Ferris, says many of their clients are older and have lived in their homes for years. Our main goal here is to keep them safe in their home in a situation that is healthy and safe for them where they want to be. And a volunteer to be able to participate in that is very rewarding. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Well, in other news, over the last couple of years during this pandemic, teachers have gone above and beyond across the country, across Texas, and here in Bear County. Now, local school district is showing their teachers and their staff their appreciation. Max Massey joins us live to explain the new pay raise at Southside ISD and why they are so important for the district, the staff, and the students. Good morning, guys. Yes, this is huge for Southside. Not only have we seen them grow in numbers, but We've seen their test scores improve dramatically over just the last three years. Yes, through the pandemic, their test scores have gone up an amazing amount. So now the district doing what they can to retain and recruit the best of the best educators. New teachers coming to Southside ISD, they're going to be the highest paid teachers in the region. So there is a high starting salary for zero experience teachers, but that's not all. The district is raising the minimum wage district-wide to $15 an hour. I spoke with Krista Dillard. She is the federal and finance director for Southside ISD. And she tells me this pay raise is to help compensate all the auxiliary staff who've been living in this time of economic challenges because of the pandemic. Also, high gas prices. And like you guys were talking about earlier, inflation numbers, 9.1% more expensive now than it was a year ago. So they're definitely focusing on meeting the financial obstacles that so many of the staff and basically the whole country is facing during this time, not to mention how much these raises help with recruiting. 
we have a $59,135 um, base rate for our zero experience teachers. And that means they're straight out of college, they're coming to us, or if they're coming to us out of the private sector, because we definitely want people who are working with our college and career readiness students to have some business experience. So guys, of the new teachers, we heard that baseline of about 59,000. Well, they also have the potential to earn an additional $3,000 for meeting the district's goal attainment plan. So that means new teachers, zero experience teachers, they can make more than $62,000 by the end of their first school year. Now, Krista added that the teachers are one of the most important things that helped Southside go from a C-rated district to a B-rated district. And they wanted to show appreciation, not to mention, guys, the expected growth that we expect to see on the South Side. Just this coming fall, well, Krista tells me they expect 400 new students. And with this influx of families, they want to be prepared with the best of the best educators. Uh, they tell me that they want to pay their staff their weight in gold. But, guys, these raises are the next best thing. And we're going to explain how they were able to do these raises they're not cutting their budget anywhere. We're also going to hear from a Southside librarian what it means for her, what it means for other staff members across the district coming up on the news at noon. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, Max. And time now, 909 and 84 degrees for now. Ahead on GMSA at 9, an area school district dealing with crime and residents in town have mixed reactions. Pets and people are not the only ones suffering from the heat and lack of rain that we've been dealing with. Our yards and plants are taking a big hit too. After the break, Sarah Costa shares some tips on how to keep our plants alive. We are not the only ones suffering from triple digit heat and severe drought. We're also dealing with uh, uh, that we have been dealing with. So are our trees and our plants. Sarah Costa spoke with a local landscaper about what it takes to keep our local vegetation alive. We are halfway through the year and the San Antonio International Airport has only recorded five inches of rain total. We have had 33 days of triple digit temps. That combo of severe drought and heat has left our local vegetation weak and requires a lot of work on our part to keep it alive. Local landscaper Mark Fanick, co-owner of Fanick's Garden Center, says if you want your plants, grass or trees to survive, you'll need to be smart about how you are watering them. We don't want to just water the surface roots, we want the, the deep roots. And watering deep six, eight inches down uh, is way better. For your plants in the ground, he says envision filling up a five gallon bucket that will keep the ground moist for several days. A good soil and mulch will also help retain water and keep your plants cool. And as for potted plants, Fanick says most will need to be watered daily or even some twice a day. Remember, if you are a SAWS customer, we are in stage two drought, which allows hand watering at any time of the day or any day. However, irrigation, sprinklers or soaker hose are only allowed once a week between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. on your designated day. Trees are suffering tremendously. Panic says for trees that are drying up, you want to water up to 18 inches deep into the soil on all sides. So don't water next to the tree trunk. Make sure you're out far at the drip line. For your grass, you'll want to make sure it gets at least one inch of water at least once a week. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 914, already 84 degrees. Yeah, they're they're creeping up and we, we know the end result, Justin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, temperatures today are going to be pretty much where they were last few days. It, interestingly enough, though, uh, we're looking at the ERCOT graph and uh, what we're noticing here is that supply is forecast to outpace demand this afternoon. Now, we have not heard from ERCOT. Uh, they put out uh, yesterday they were asking people to conserve. I would imagine they're going to do that again today between 2 and 8 p.m., but we haven't heard from them yet. Uh, and that graph doesn't look great for uh, what we have going on today with these temperatures. So just a heads up there. We'll keep you posted once we do hear from ERCOT on what the latest is there with the energy demand this afternoon. I want to show you a comparison between 2011 and 2022. So this is the drought monitor as of today. You see the extreme drought that we have around the area uh, to exceptional in places like Kerrville and Fredericksburg and parts of Bear County. I want to take you back to 2011. And I think 2022 best compares to 2011 when you're talking about drought and temperatures. And this was 2011. Look how bad the drought was back then. It was more widespread. Most of Texas was underneath that exceptional drought. 
Not so much the case this year. Uh, but, you know, it kind of feels like we're being singled out here. Really, it's, it's kind of our area that has been hit the hardest with the drought and the really hot temperatures uh, so far in 2022. But 2011 was a bad year. And the other thing I'll point out about that is if you remember in 2011, once we got into the fall, things were still pretty dry and we had those gusty winds and then we saw the bass drop fires. Uh, so we have to worry about those kind of things too. We need some rain. That is the bottom line. The aquifer is still dropping too. And uh, you see it's already down to 632.4. Could we drop into the 620s? I think that's possible as we go forward. Now keep in mind, as Sarah just pointed out, sauce customers are still in stage two watering restrictions. But as far as Edwards Aquifer Authority, eventually with Kamau Springs dropping and the uh, aquifer number dropping, there could be some stage four issues there. We'll let you know. Blue skies at the moment. Temperatures 85 degrees at the airport. 84 Stinson will warm me up for a morning low of only 80. 84 Kelly, 83 Randolph. And dew points are pretty high right now. We've got dew points in the 70s, so that means uh, heat index is very much an, an issue at this hour. Feels like 92 at the airport, 90 in Converse. Uh, 91 is what it feels like in New Braunfels. Feels like 90 in Seguin. And the forecast high temperatures today, uh, 104, 105, some places near 106. It's going to be another extremely hot day. we got to be careful. We still have those heat advisories in place. KSAT 12 hour forecast, 96 already by noon, 102 by 3 o'clock, 104 by 4 o'clock. And we do have some very small chances for rain. This looks pretty similar to what we've seen the last couple of days where we get some of those pop ups here and there. Most of us stay dry and the computer models show that uh, really I think it's the whole country that's kind of the favorite area today if we're going to see anything with that 10 percent chance of rain. Now tomorrow a little more energy comes in from the northeast and I think this brings a slightly better chance for rain. 20% chance in your forecast for your Thursday. Hopefully we get something, something or someone around here at least gets a good downpour. High pressure is still the uh, still the big issue here with it uh, taking hold of our forecast. Now as we get into next week, it does try to shift just a little bit further west. We got another high that builds in the Gulf of Mexico and I think in between there, sometimes you can get some showers and storms going. Again, not a great chance, but it is something. We're looking for anything here in this seven day forecast. So 101 tomorrow, 20% chance of rain. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, more triple digits and uh, some more chances or small chances Monday and Tuesday. But we're going to keep this streak of triple digit temperatures alive, guys. We are on day 12 now in a row of triple digit we're both shaking our heads. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. That's, that's OK. And not everyone is complaining about the heat, though. It's been good for businesses that make their bank when temperatures rise. All right. Patty Santos shows us the spots that thrive in the heat. It's so, so hot. In Texas, the summer cool off starts with paletas. When it's like um, 100 degrees or 103, they begin to come. Here at El Paraíso Ice Cream Shop on Fredericksburg, inflation forced them to raise their prices to 60 cents. Owner Maria Elena Flores is counting on customers during this big heat wave. Then it's too slow in the winter. Further out on the west side at Los Cocos, people are hoping to refresh with fruit cups or agua frescas. People um, come out after they get off work and they bring their families and the kids. They get mangonadas, they get fresas con crema. And but the only thing hotter than the San Antonio weather has been the box office. These cup holders will keep your drinks cool at Santicos at West Lakes. And that little blue light means that it's starting to get cold. You actually feel it. With temperatures around 68 degrees inside, you might even need a blanket. We sell blankets. This is one of our most popular items during the summer. It's so hot, but when you come in here, it's so cool. You'll definitely need gloves at the Ice and Golf Center at Northwoods. Right now, it's probably around 55 to 45 in the summer. It stays around there. In the winter, it gets even colder. The general public can cool off their feet between 1230 and 3 p.m. daily for about $14 per person. For these businesses, when the mercury drops, their summer boom sizzles. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. I like to go to Northwoods and, and hang out, but it looks a little weird. They're like, isn't that that guy from KSAT? And <laughs> why is, is he not skating? Why is he not skating? <laughs> well, okay. he's just keeping cool. Yes, I am. Yeah. It's a part of a bigger plan. 920 right now, about 85 degrees. And coming up after the break, a growing neighboring city is working on ways to address issues in their community regarding access to mental health resources. We're going to explain when we come back.
And welcome back. It's 924. Kendall County and Bernie are expected to double in size by 2030. And that growth is exciting, but can also increase community issues like access to mental health resources. And that is why Kendall County has created an extremely rare mental health collaboration. As Courtney Friedman explains, it involves every single sector of the community. The numbers are disheartening. From 2009 to 2021, the CDC reports high school students who feel persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness rose from 26% to 44%, the highest level ever recorded. I don't blame kids for feeling sad and anxious because what are, what are we doing? Uh, what's going to happen to us? Bryce Bodie is a dad of two teen daughters, but he's also Bernie's District 4 City Councilman and a social worker for Hill Country Family Services. He's seen COVID and the shooting in Uvalde affect his kids, but he's staying positive because of a rare thing that's happening in his community. It's called the Kendall County Behavioral Health Collaborative, a mental health coalition that began a couple years ago with a focus on kids. Equitable access for our children to see a psychiatrist, a counselor, having um, medication if necessary, having the adequate resources inside their schools, having their parents taught positive parenting. Stacy Almaguer is the Hill Country Family Services CEO overseeing the coalition. She says the nonprofit, education, healthcare, law enforcement and business sectors are all involved. We're working hard on mental health first aid training for individuals in our community to be able to go into our schools to provide that. The Kendall County Sheriff's Department and Bernie PD are all doing mental health training right now. They're even doing the same thing at the jail. The mental health officer's role is to be that intermediary between our law enforcement and our community. Trying to deter from having to put people in jail, having to send people to the ER. And breaking the stigma so people of all ages know it's okay to ask for help. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. 926, 85 degrees. There's a lot more head on GMSA at 9. Including the recent thefts in Pleasanton at one of their schools and at the school district's police department. Plus the angry responses from the Valley Mayor and the community regarding the leaked video of the tragic school shooting in May. What the mayor had to say when we come back. Another heated city council meeting in the city of Uvalde. The one happening just hours after the Austin American statesman leaked video from Robb Elementary the day of the shooting. The video is graphic. You can hear gunfire inside of the classroom and see law enforcement waiting in the hallway before they finally breached the door and killed the gunman. The video was supposed to originally be released Sunday, first privately to the families and then publicly shortly thereafter. Valley Mayor Don McLaughlin did not hold back in his criticism of the early release. Gunman come in and hear the gunshots. They don't even relive that. They, they didn't do it. Uh, and that was the most chicken way to put this video out today. A father of two children, including an eight-year-old who was at Robb Elementary on May 24th, was more critical of the law enforcement's response seen in the video. Anybody see them do a good job? Just because they tried to go in there, was that good enough? Was that good enough for the people that were bleeding out? That wasn't good enough. And while the release of the video took much of the attention off the city council last night, the vote to accept Uvalde School District Police Chief Pete Adendondo's resignation from city council was met with cheers. Other top stories of Pleasanton ISD school and the district's police department were broken into recently, but the good news, the suspects and the weapons they're accused of stealing are in custody. As John Paul Brahas reports, the school district's police chief is just a few days into the job and these recent crimes are getting mixed reactions from the community. I think it's insane. This was not just a simple school break in. This was a mass security breach where deadly weapons were taken. Pleasanton ISD police say someone broke into their building and stole weapons from their gun cabinet and evidence locker on July 7th. It's a second break in at a Pleasanton ISD building in less than a month. It's left some residents uneasy, while others say they have faith in the district department. I, I think that the district is well aware of we've had issues and they are trying to take care of it. For things to um, be stolen of that nature is I mean, it makes a question of the security of our school system. District Police Chief Michael Gilbert says two men were able to break the lock off two exterior doors with a crowbar. Once inside, they stole a department-issued AR-15 and shotgun, as well as a handgun and a long rifle from an evidence locker. The chief says the weapons from evidence are from a year-and-a-half-old case. So why were there guns here on the Pleasanton campus in the police department? So we do 
have an active police department here where we store evidence. All weapons have been recovered. Uh, thank God nobody was hurt with them. With the new police uh, officer on deck, just started working, so I think it'll be taken care of. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. The suspects face multiple felony charges. Meanwhile, Pleasanton ISD police now have a new 12 gun safe to store their weapons as well as those from evidence. The chief also says he plans to get steel plated doors for better security. And taking a look outside with live cam. Now we're at 86 degrees. Those temperatures keep climbing in. We will see triple digits again today. It's almost a certainty. You see a few clouds out there. Yesterday we had a lot more cloud covered today. Not so much. We'll, we'll get a few clouds by the afternoon with some isolated showers and storms popping up. I want to show you the uh, temperatures across the country yesterday. We were at 105. Not the hottest place in the country, though. That was uh, out towards Death Valley, Phoenix, Las Vegas at 112 yesterday, so uh, very hot out there. Of course, it's more of a dry heat, as we always say. We have a little more humidity here to contend with. 102 in Dallas, a large portion of the country really uh, dealing with that heat, thanks to our heat high. At the moment, we're at 85, but it feels like 92 when you factor in that thick humidity this morning. It feels like 92, it's dense, and feels like 95 right now in Gonzales at 930 in the morning. Brutal. KSAT 12-hour forecast. 96 by noontime will be at 98 by 1 p.m. A few more clouds, as I said, this afternoon, but I think we still make it up to around 103, 104. There's about a 10% chance of rain. That's it today. Anything we see is going to be very isolated. A little better chance for some uh, showers coming up tomorrow. We'll look at that forecast and seven-day forecast, which includes more heat coming up here in just a bit, guys. Justin, thank you. Now to the new evidence from the January 6th committee focusing on former President Donald Trump claiming his actions summoned the mob to storm the U.S. Capitol. There are now questions as to whether the evidence increases the chances of Trump facing any charges. As ABC's Jay O'Brien reports, legal experts are weighing in. This morning, the committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol suggests former President Trump may have tried to influence witness testimony after calling a witness not yet seen at the hearings. That person declined to answer or respond to President Trump's call and instead alerted their lawyer to the call. Their lawyer alerted us. And this committee has supplied that information to the Department of Justice. It's unclear what, if anything, the Justice Department will do with the committee's referral. The committee heard testimony yesterday from former White House counsel Pat Cipollone, who described a, quote, unhinged meeting at the White House on December 18th, involving a group of outside advisors to the president looking to challenge the 2020 election results. Among them, retired General Michael Flynn and lawyers Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell, who wanted Trump to issue an order to seize voting machines. Cipollone says he raced to the Oval Office when he found out about the meeting. Can the federal government seize voting machines? It's a terrible idea for the country. That's not how we do things in the United States. When the meeting finished, Trump tweeted his supporters calling on them to come to Washington on January 6th, saying it will be wild. Stephen Ayers, an Ohio man who pleaded guilty to participating in the riot, testified that that tweet from Trump inspired him to travel to Washington. Basically, uh, you know, the president, you know, got everybody riled up. Ayers said he only left the Capitol after Trump posted a video telling rioters to leave. If he would have done that earlier in the day, 1.30, I, I, you know, you know, we wouldn't be in this, maybe we wouldn't be in this bad of a situation. The committee also showed a drafted tweet not sent by Trump, which called on his supporters to, quote, march to the Capitol on January 6th. Committee members claim it shows the attack was premeditated. The committee's next public hearing is set for next Thursday. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Turning sports now. Summer League has been a highlight show for some of the youngest players in the league, including some of the newest members of the San Antonio Spurs. Summer League Spurs, they're not winning a ring right now, but it is fun time to see a glimpse of what our team's future could be. Max Massey joins us live again. And Max, who are some of the big <laughs> names that we need to look out for? So here's a fun fact, guys. I, I mentioned the ring because now Summer League has a ring. So there you go. Fun fact of the morning. So speaking of Summer League, are the Summer League Spurs 0-3? Yes. But we are seeing some great basketball. And 
We're seeing some future talent on the floor for the silver and black. So remember, the Spurs had three first round picks. We had Jeremy Sohan, Blake Wesley, Malachi Branham. Now, Jeremy not playing. He entered the NBA's health and safety protocol, but he's back at the games. And if you've seen any of the clips surfacing online, He's actually on the sidelines kind of chirping the other players. Some of the stuff he says is actually hilarious. So let's take a look at the last game. San Antonio Spurs, winless in Vegas, dropping their third game to the Rockets. Now the Spurs actually blowing an 18-point lead at the Thomas and Mack Arena. That despite the fact that Spurs' first-round pick, number 20, Malachi Branham, he had his best game yet, 20 points, six boards, two assists, two steals, and right behind him, another first-round pick, Number 25 overall, Blake Wesley, 14 points, six boards, four assists, three steals. But here's the thing. Going against the Rockets, they have the third overall pick in the draft. He was actually supposed to be the first. A little backstory there. Rockets, Jabari Smith, he had 19 points, nine rebounds, and the Rockets won 97 to 84. It's feeling, it's feeling good. You know, I still got to be more consistent, um, but I, I feel good about myself. I definitely got to put on some muscle. Um, you know, I've been working with the strength coach, and we've been lifting when we didn't. We don't have no no practice or no game, so tomorrow I'm going to get in the weight room and, you know, get big. He actually did just that. He, on his day off, went to the weight room, got big. So we also want to give a shout-out to Darius Days, 13 points and 11 boards. Now, some people might be watching asking, where's Josh Primo? Got to say, he's looked awesome in previous games. He, in that game against the Cavs, dropped 20 points, but he is now in the health and safety protocols. So what comes next? No, Summer League is not over. Next up, we have the Atlanta Hawks tomorrow, 2 p.m. Pretty sure it's on ESPN, too, so you guys can watch, see all the young talent on the Spurs. And remember, guys, Atlanta Hawks, the new team of DeJounte Murray. I know a lot of Spurs fans, they're a little, we'll say, apprehensive about this season kind of talking about a rebuild and whatnot. I'm excited. You know, Malachi, Blake, you know, Jeremy, watched him in college. He looks great. And Josh Primo, see if he can be the leader of this. I say leader. I mean, most of these guys are like 19 years old, guys. We know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, of course. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. And you know what that could mean? Possibly cheaper tickets. Just saying. Max. <laughs> That's one okay. way to look at it. All right, Max Massey live at home with more on our Spurs and Summer League play. Thanks, Max. 939 right now, 86 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and here's a look at what's still to come. Coming up next, we get an up-close look at sharks and the important role they play in the ecosystem. They are certainly fascinating, fascinating rather, and sometimes misunderstood creatures. We're talking about sharks. And ahead of Shark Awareness Day tomorrow, SeaWorld is teaching us more about the vital role that sharks play in our oceans and look at how unique they really are. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from SeaWorld. And Tiffany, good morning. How many ty types of shark species can you find there at SeaWorld? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. You can find four different types of shark species here, but check it out. This is an incredible location here. It's a 400,000 gallon aquarium here at SeaWorld. You can learn all about sharks, where sharks can be found, what they eat, and so much more. You get an up close look here. And to talk a little bit more about this, we have aquarium supervisor, Janelle. Good morning. Talk to us about these species. What makes them so unique? So like you mentioned, we have four species of sharks here, our sand tiger, sandbar, nurse, and zebra, and they are all unique in their own way. Uh, many are developed to feed on different uh, sorts of animals and maintain the ecosystem. So that's the importance of sharks. They're the apex predator of the ecosystem in the ocean. They feed on the weak, the sick, the dying uh, fish and other animals, and so they maintain a healthy habitat. There's a lot of misconceptions about them, right? That's true. So sharks are known as terrorizing, menacing sharks. They attack. That is not true. So sharks are in the environment that we oftentimes enter, right? And so at that time, the sharks are curious. They want to see what's out there. They don't have hands like we do that we can touch and see what it is. So they're going to use their mouth to taste and touch. And so a lot of times they're going to use that first initial bite 
to see what it is, if it's a prey item, whatever, and it, they'll decide if it's something they wanna to continue to feed on or not. And oftentimes with us as humans, they get that initial bite and then they move on because we are not something that's in their natural diet. They're gonna typically feed on, like I mentioned, fish, but they'll also feed on uh, invertebrates in the, the sand. So crabs, mollusks, snails, um, also different creatures that live within the reef environment. And they have very unique teeth. Absolutely. So I've got an example of a shark jaw here. And so shark jaws will have rows and rows of razor sharp teeth. And so they go through many teeth, sometimes just throughout a day. Um, but they can go through 30,000 teeth in their lifetime. And each tooth is shaped differently depending on the species of shark, what food type they're going to go after, whether it's needle-like uh, for just kind of gripping prey or maybe for shredding prey and getting a piece of, of food off a of bigger prey item. These are some of the things you can learn here. What other things can people see when they come here? So not only can you view our sharks from our underwater gallery here at Explorers Reef, uh, you can also purchase a shark tour program sometimes if you want to get a little bit of a behind the scenes look and see a shark up close and you can even touch one as well. And we're going to head over there later this morning. Um, we'll have that all for you coming up on the noon show. Thank you so much for joining us. Back to you guys in the studio. Tiffany Huertas with the smart assignment and the coolness of an aquarium right <laughs> yeah. now. Thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> Thank you. She's like, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, we're, we're doing this all week. <laughs> yeah. 86 degrees already out at San Antonio International Airport. And did I just see right another Saharan dust uh, forecast? Yeah, speaking of oh. uh, oceans and Predators, yeah, we got something coming across the ocean headed for us, and that is that Saharan dust. Uh, it will be here, we think, by the weekend. I think it probably kicks up more so on Sunday into Monday is when you will notice it. As you remember, it brings a little bit of haze to the atmosphere and makes for some nice sunrises and sunsets. And uh, just a general haze to the atmosphere. It can cause some allergy issues, so just a heads up. We haven't seen it in a while, but it is making a return this weekend and early next week. Consecutive 100 degree days, we do have to touch on this, 13 now in a row. Uh, we're forecasting 13 as of today. And so that would put us squarely in third place for consecutive 100 degree days. But I think we could put together 15, 16, 17. We're gonna get close to that 21, straight consecutive days of 100 degrees, I think, uh, if things go the way it is looking. So what a stretch we are dealing with. Time lapse, well, we didn't get much cloud cover this morning. We started off mostly clear. Temperatures did not cool at all. We started off in the low 80s. We're up to 85 now. Southeasterly winds at about eight miles per hour. There are some clouds out there, and some folks did get rain yesterday, by the way. We did not get any here in San Antonio, but some places in the hill country did. And there is a little bit of cloud cover in the hill country this morning. Temperature wise, well, uh, 80s for most of us, 84 Stinson, 83 Randolph, uh, 85 Boulevard, 83 Kenya Lake, 81 in Kerrville. And dew points are high, and so the heat index is jumping up into the 90s now. So that morning run, if you haven't put it, uh, done it yet, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty tough uh, with these numbers rising and the heat index already in the 90s in many, many spots. 91 is what it feels like in New Braunfels, 91 the current heat index, Canyon Lake. KSAT 12-hour forecast, by noontime, we're already up to 96. 102 by 3 o'clock, 104 by 4 p.m. And there is that 10% chance of rain. I think we could see a pop-up shower today. Very similar to yesterday. It's, it's going to be few and far between. And then temperatures uh, fall off into the 90s by 9 p.m. 96. Uh, here's the uh, computer model showing what we're expecting today. 10% chance, as I mentioned. This is 4 o'clock. Does show a couple pop-ups probably in the Hill Country. So San Antonio likely misses out again today. But tomorrow there's a little better chance. Piece of energy comes in from the northeast. And that brings some isolated to so maybe scattered showers, especially as you get into the Hill Country. So a 20% chance tomorrow. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Any little bit will help at this point. Uh, and then as we get into Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think things dry a little bit. Thanks to our ridge of high pressure, which is still... Uh, fairly strong sitting over the Four Corners region, but it still is uh, taking hold of our forecast. By Saturday, it's still hot. A Sunday into Monday, this thing does try to move a little bit further west, and we have another little ridge of high pressure that develops in the Gulf of Mexico. 
in between there is where you can sometimes get some showers and storms. So we're going to put in a 20% chance for Tuesday. I think Monday afternoon and Tuesday afternoon, we could see some isolated stuff. So we'll keep an eye on that. The seven day forecast still all triple digits here. 104 today, 101 tomorrow, 100 Friday, 102 both Saturday and Sunday. I think the weekend's going to be pretty hot. These heat advisories will probably stick around in the next week. Uh, there are those small chances for rain returning. Plus, we've got the dust, guys. You ever wake up in a cold sweat, Justin, going, I feel like I'm doing the same forecast over and over and over? <laughs> Pretty much. And uh, I'm just hoping and praying that, uh, you know, maybe in August or something we can get a change. Some yes, sort of pattern change. We all are. Yes, yes, we are. Thank you, Justin. 950, about 86 degrees. And when we come back, we're going to tell you about a new partnership that we have that will help kids stay active while at home this summer. Welcome back. 953. Keeping kids active is important, especially during the summer months. So we have partnered up with San Antonio Sports to make training videos accessible to you and your family. The San Antonio Sports Library of I Play After School videos can teach kids about different sports like soccer and basketball, and it can also take them through workout routines step by step. So the videos are led by athletes who've been at the top of their sport. They were originally provided to local PE teachers as a free resources, a free resource rather, for distance learning during the height of the pandemic. But now you can access them from the comfort of your home. So to check out these videos, just head over to our website at kset.com and head to the kids section. And Justin teaches us basketball too, I believe, in one of those. Oh, nice. uh, I wish. <laughs> Man, I played basketball last night, and uh, it was it wasn't pretty. My my age is starting to show. I'm just going to say he that lost right now. But you were in, you were indoors though. <laughs> and you <he> lost <laughs> ten pounds in water weight. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> uh, yes, and we were indoors because uh, this heat is no joke. You don't want to be doing some of that stuff outside, especially at the heat of the day. 104. Uh, later this afternoon, small, small chance for rain, a little better chance tomorrow. We dropped the temperature some, and by drop, I mean down to 101, 100 Friday. Hot weekend, another small chance of rain early next week. All right, Justin, I don't know if you remember this, but back in the spring, we mentioned that Favor Delivery was looking for a chief taco officer. I do mm -hmm. remember that. Okay, so we have a follow-up yeah. to that this week. Yeah, they hired one. Yeah, they Very sure did. Very cool, and... It's from San Antonio. Yes, indeed. Uh, so they announced the position was open back in April, and they've hired Chris Flores of San Antonio. Mm -hmm. He has been named to the coveted position, and he has been selected from hundreds of applicants. So Flores will travel across Texas in search of the best tacos in the Lone Star State that has to offer, and then while documenting and sharing his experience. So he'll receive over $10,000 for his role as chief taco officer, taste testing tacos across the state over two months, as well as food, transportation, accommodations, custom favor swag, and free delivery from favor for a year. So we have some local favor taco staff. Yeah, so this one is most ordered breakfast tacos from across San Antonio. Number one, bean and cheese. Bean and cheese, of yeah. course. Number two, bacon, egg, and cheese. And number three, chorizo and egg. Number, number four, four, potato, potato egg, egg, and cheese. And, and cheese, okay, yeah. Yeah, and five? Migas. Migas, all right. So the most ordered taco meat, Justin, okay. number one, chorizo. All right, at the That's top. Fair. Number two, brisket. That's surprising to me. Uh, number three, ranked uh, barbacoa, barbacoa rank number three. Uh -huh. And then chicken fajita number four. Number five, beef fajita meat. Should it be the other way around? I beef over chicken? I don't know. I don't know. Let's just go eat tacos. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys.